Hello folks, Phil Gallagher of Thraven You here for another legacy video. Today's video is supported once again by Corinna D, who wanted to see me make some updates to her Rug Madness stack. Um, last time around we played Jund Madness and now we're back to Rug. So Rug offers Cephalid Coliseum and Careful Study and Breakthrough as the primary reasons for wanting to be in these colors. Uh, we're going to try some spicy tech this time of Bizarre Trade Mage is a 3-4 flyer for 3. When it ETBs, you draw 2 cards and then discard 3 cards. So that's a nice bazaar of Baghdad activation on a creature, which is pretty cool when you actually do want to discard cards with this deck. Um, notably, discarding 3 cards makes the hollow ones free, uh, which is, is sort of a big deal because the careful studies and faithless lootings don't make them free. Um, in case you haven't seen me pilot this deck before, the general idea is that you try to discard uh, blazing and basking root wallas in order to enable early venge vines and also discarding cards allows you to make hollow ones. We get anger so that all the creatures that we dump into play will become hasty so long as we control a mountain and Anji's ravager becomes a great way to reload. Lion's Eye Diamond in this deck is just better than Black Lotus because it comes with the upside of discarding your hand. Yes, I know what I just said. Um, as far as the sideboard goes, the sideboard is pretty much the same as last time around. Um, I had an idea. I ran it by her, and she was cool with me trying it. Um, we're going to try Lotus Petal on the sideboard. Um, generally speaking, my game plan versus combo is go faster, and Lotus Petal is something that allows me to go faster. Um, this is something that I've done with uh, dredge decks in the past, uh, like when you need to go faster, just throw some Lotus Petals in the board, and you can go all in sooner. Um, I'm excited to give this a go. I've enjoyed playing this archetype a lot. Um, I don't think I have anything else to say. Let's just get right to the games. Uh, if you want to see one of your own decks on stream, the donation information as well as the deck list is available in the video description via Top Deck. Uh, if you are already subscribed to the channel, great. Keep it up. Throw me a like. If you're not subscribed, what are you doing? Subscribe for sweet legacy, modern, and vintage content seven days a week. Let's battle. My first opening hand is a little weird here. I think it's a keep. Um, this is probably a hand that tries to go for it on turn two rather than turn one. I think I turn one Faithless Looting. Ooh. Ragavan. Okay. Mountain Ragavan is a little weird. Um, anyway, I think I Faithless Looting on turn one, uh, trying to dump the Vengevine in there and then try to uh, dig towards some stuff that allows me to... Uh, like get Avenge Vine plus on turn two. Okay, it, it is just blue red Delver um, that is playing a mountain. That's fine. All right, so I'm going to take two here. There's a hollow one. That's a shame. That is like exactly the sort of card I would want to draw this turn. And my opponent ponders. So they potentially don't have blue mana without the Ragavan, and they are uh, looking for it now. Uh, once upon a time is. Not good anymore. Um, oh, I don't have to play around days because you have a fucking mountain. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, all right, so a Venge Vine is going away. And honestly, I think I'm going to junk a Once Upon a Time here. Just don't see myself casting that card. And now I'll careful study. I'm going to discard an Ox. And I think an Anji's Ravager that I can't actually uh, cast currently, question mark. I could also just discard a land here. I want to double spell. I just discard a land. My opponent didn't make a land drop last turn. Now, this whole situation is just a little weird. Come at me, monkey boy. The reason to play the Basky Root Wall out on my turn, by the way, is to try and block Ragavan. But I think returning my Vengevine... Damn it, that would have been so good. I think returning my Vengevine is just so much more important than trying to stop the Ragavan. My opponent has taken back-to-back -back bangers off of my deck. Awfully rude. Like, bizarre trade mage 100% of the time would have returned Vengevine there. Alright. Um, not, not the best draw. How many cards are in my graveyard, actually? Counting that fetch land. One, two... Three, four, five. Hmm. We're not we're not quite there the way I want to yet. 
Let's play Lightning Bolt Fodder. Flash Days Fodder. Hardcast Days. A Brainstorm. Yeah, there's the days. Okay, sure. Now my opponent is starting to get to mana levels where they can actually reasonably cast cards in my deck, um, which I don't like. I have some bangers in my deck. They're just large. Well, I didn't want to draw that Venge Vine. That's the good news. Okay, there we go. That's a bit better. So, I'll cast this. 100% a Force of Will target if my opponent has a Force of Will. They do not. So, now I am going to go fucking wild. I will cast my Rootwalla. I will cast my Anji's Ravager, which is conveniently my second spell of the turn, returning the Vengevine. Yes. Now, I will get the Ox. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Done. All right, Ancestral Ox resolves. Okay. Um, I guess I play the LED first in case I get into another Anji's Ravager. And all looting. Oh my gosh, Bill, you're so good. How do you do it? How do you do it? Card both of those, and my opponent is done with me. Okay, it took us till turn four, uh, but we did something pretty impressive. Okay, um, I will probably want a little bit of interaction versus Delver, um, like the Firestorms and Lightning Axe sort of things. That's going to be five cards that I'll want to board in. Um, I can see going down on the Angers. I don't think the Haste is super relevant here. And on the draw, I can see going down the Once Upon a Times. Um, breakthrough is also a little weird. Uh, it's very powerful, but uh, it's a little all-in. Actually, yeah. Hey, let's adjust in that direction. I think I like Bizarre Trade Mage. Like, it's a 3-4 flyer that walls most of their threats in addition to, like, doing discard stuff. So, like, this is a little slow. Maybe too slow on the draw, but... I don't know. Like, maybe with all of these, I just want to swap the Bizarre Trade Mage for the fourth Once Upon a Time. This hand is decisively medium. It doesn't really, like, objectively do anything. I think I'm going to mulligan this one. Uh, oh, this is just wrong colors. This was a red source I would be keeping this hand. This is a fantastic five-card hand. It just gets to go all in on Anji's Ravager. I keep, pitch this, and then I will be junking one of Faithless Looting or Lightning Axe. They do different things. I think I like junking the Faithless Looting because it's so likely that my opponent plays a turn one threat. Uh, my opponent mulligan to five, by the way. Fetching and a Delver. Sure. <laughs> I'm going to have some choices. So the first thing I need to do is see if Lion's Eye Diamond resolves. It does not. Uh, my hand is considerably worse, but I think that's okay. Volk, probably Volk. And uh, let's see if their last card is Days. I'll honestly be pretty impressed if it is. Asked. All right. Um, the board state is pretty similar right now. Like, my opponent mulliganed into Oblivion, and so did I. I have some things that are scary later, but nothing that's scary right now. Okay. Lizard is uh, sort of like Delver, in terms of a clock. But uh, it requires a little more mana. This isn't the worst, and if like this demands an answer from my opponent, like that's great for me. As this game goes long, I, I have two different Ancestral Recalls on a stick. Oh, no more land drops for the opponent. Uh, cycle or beat? I think I just want to cycle and hit land drops. Like, I am probably going to win this game in an overwhelming fashion if I get an Audrey's Ravager into play and it gets to attack. I don't think this is 
like try to close the game before opponent finds land drop number two. I just don't think that's realistic with a 1-1 one, one that requires me to commit two mana to it every turn for it to be a 3-3. Three, three. All right, land. Land is fantastic. All right, see if our Ravager resolves. I will not be attacking um, in this turn cycle regardless. I would very much like to trade with the Ragavan one way or another. Okay, I am totally good with blue mana being tapped. Okay. So... I'm going to just fetch and thin now, pick up another Valk. I think I go ahead and attack with just Anji's Ravager and hold this back. Possible I'm supposed to attack with both. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have two, two bodies held back. I'm going to attack with both. Well, I'm probably going to have two bodies, rather. All right. Okay, my, my opponent concedes after the Ancestral. That's totally fair. GG's. All right, so we're probably playing against Enchantress, and I have kind of a wild hand here. So I can play LED, discard my hand, get Basking Ruwala into hand, cast Faithless Looting, and then if I hit any Madness creature, I will just, like, have 6 plus power on turn 1. Any land, any Rootwalla makes this hand absolutely amazing. Accordingly, I'm going to keep. There's some degree of risk here, but the thing I want to do most versus Enchantress is just kill them in game one. Because as the game goes long, like they are going to become more and more favored. They have prison pieces that I just like physically cannot interact with in any way. All right. Forest Pass. Good news for me. YOLO. Here we go. This is nerve-wracking. All right, I believe in you, deck. Don't fail me now. Uh -huh. <laughs> Operation YOLO has fa failed. <laughs> All right, um, so much for game one. Now, I, I can just, like, draw another LED or something, and, uh... <laughs> and, uh, get out of this spot that I've put myself in. Oh, no, Living Wish? Tabernacle. Alright, that's pretty good. Again, like, anger... Anger makes Tabernacle not all that scary. Alright. We're gonna, we're gonna chill. My opponent's not going anywhere fast, either. Okay. Yeah, I can take ten more turns of this. We're good. Alright. You'll, you'll be good later. Let's, let's will an LED to the top of my deck. I have no no lands in the top thirteen cards. Uh huh. All right, you've got your lands. I see an enchantress effect now, probably. It could just be another destiny spinner, honestly. Just like block me. Nope, they are uh, picking up the enchantress. I'm not sure how good that actually is. Oh baby, oh baby. Gotta try. Crack for red. Madness the Lizard in. You do the ox thing. One, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven. Skipped over something. Eight. Done. All right, this returns a double Venge Vine, which is worth eight damage. Now, you want to draw a mountain. Not a fucking mountain at all. Um, yeah, yeah. I'll just take this. <laughs> My opponent basically made the same joke that I did. Add to go for it. So I can keep the ox and then try to bring the venge vines back later. My opponent's not getting too far ahead. Uh, in terms of the board here, because, like, they're spending so much, so many of their resources on the tabernacle. No. No. Yes. Opponent's pun game is strong. They're having a good time. Um, Blazing Root Wall is not bad. Um, I don't expect my opponent to have land destruction. I'm just going to fetch out now. I would like to give my creature haste. Uh, important, you understand. 
And we're going to keep uh, Blazing Rootwalla to double spell at some point and bring back two Venge Vines. My opponent can double trade for the Ox here. We'll see if they do. Uh, the answer is no. My opponent hasn't drawn any mana acceleration yet. Oh, there's some. Um, awkwardly, um, that one enchants a forest specifically, so they can't use it on snow-covered plains to go and uh, like change how their mana is going to work this turn. And that drew them into the fetch. Okay, new enchantress. <clears throat> I want to pay with Tropical Island here, I believe. Oh, oh, buddy. Am I good with this? I think I'm good with this. I have six cards in Graveyard. Soon. Soon. All right, Ox gets in there. And my opponent is going for a Chomp. Totally fine. And now I'll play the Cephalid Coliseum, uh, which unfortunately I not use its primary ability yet. But I am I am real close to uh, getting in those last few points of damage. Yeah, on Thin Ice is a very good card here. Exiles the Ox, so that does free up my mana on my turn. So now I could naturally draw um, a Basking Rootwalla and double spell to return the Venge Vines and um, put some damage on the board. Another Cephalid Coliseum. Well, yes, that means we're going about this the hard way. So I'm going to cast this Anger. I'm going to get in for two damage with it. Or not. Ah, uh, opponent, you are so incredibly rude. You see, I wanted to sacrifice this in my upkeep to the Tabernacle Trigger so that I could double Cephalid Coliseum. Rude. I don't know what this card does. Spells your opponent's cast during your turn cost one more. Creatures control get plus one plus one. Whenever you attack target attacking creature gets plus one plus one for each other attacking creature and gets double strike. Okay, cool. Alright, so my opponent just picked up Sarah's Sanctum. Uh, they will they will get to go a little ham here. Alright, draw your cards. Tabernacle is now a mana producing land. The whole Paladin class thing is actually kind of good on this specific board state where like I don't have any defensive creatures. Like my opponent leveling that up uh, represents a fair amount of damage. Yeah, that's that's a super interesting card. All right, that's seven mana off of this. All right, Paladin class becomes level two. Paladin class becomes level three. Wow. I would just like to say that I would like to get some uh, some things in my graveyard here. Apologies, I need to check that. Okay, I will deal with the tail end of that after this game. Uh, I think I'm banking on the Cephalid Coliseum activation doing enough to somehow win this game. Uh, but it's got to do a lot. Here we go. Uh, this doesn't quite do it. Uh, I am dead on board. GG's. A quick graveyard check. No, there's nothing in there that helps me. Shoot. After an initial flop, uh, we did uh, surprisingly well in coming back there. I'm lagging a bit. I'm going to reboot. Okay, I am back. Um, I think going fast matters quite a bit here. So I'm going to bring in the Lotus Petals and the Chain of Vapors to bounce any sort of prison piece that I can't win through. Um, this card is slow. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. Um, then where do I go? 40 seconds. I think I want the Once Upon a Times. So maybe I get rid of the Breakthroughs. Just a little risky. Um, a Hollow One? Maybe one Hollow One. Like, my, my, my conceptual high-level plan for the matchup is, like, put Avenge Vine into play on turn one and kill my opponent with it. Okay. This is, this is a great hand. Uh, this is a great hand that does things on turn two. This is going to be Scalding Turn Pass. Turn to careful study, discard Vengevine, and a Rootwalla. 
cast Rootwalla, one mana, cast Hollow One, and have a pretty respectable amount of mana in play. A Deafening Silence type card is uh, pretty scary for me. All right. What do you have? Just mana acceleration. I'm good with that. And I'm very sure that I want Volcanic Island, so I'm just going to grab it now. I'm going to use Ravager. That's fine. Careful study. Discard Vengevine. Rootwalla. Madness, you. Um, don't think which land I play matters. Cast you for one mana. Return the Vengevine. And send it sideways. I have my opponent on a two turn clock now. And I still have more gas left in the tank. Alright, Sithis into what? Oh, just mana. That's good for me. Okay. I am probably just playing an Anji's Ravager with my turn. I could just play Once Upon a Time and pump Root Walla, though. I don't hate that. I'll see whether or not my opponent blocks the Root Walla. They do not. This is 7 damage. It could be 9. I think I'm just going to take the 7 and assume that Anji's Ravager will be worth that damage in one way or another in the future. Just such a powerful effect. This is 6 mana. Okay, that's not so bad. That is also not so bad. The incidental life gain my opponent has off Sith. This is pretty cool, though. Okay. That's sure not a solitary confinement. My opponent gets another draw off that trigger. Paladin class is not that big a deal. Now my opponent spamming spells is... Oh, this is the sort of thing that matters here. I'll lose either the Hollow One or the Anji's Ravager, kind of depending on what my opponent thinks the pace of the game is. I can hit for 11 this turn as things stand right now. Oh my god, it's Sporefrog. Poor frog is so fucking good here. <laughs> uh, that's <laughs> that's awesome. All right, I guess let's start here and plan my turn. The once upon a time honestly reveals a bunch of medium stuff. The Vengevine is cool under some circumstances. The basking Ruwala might just be better. I don't know. Maybe every point of damage matters. And in which case, it's better to cast a Hasty Vengevine next turn. Alright. Let's get in there. And let's see if my opponent sacrifices the Spore Frog this turn, or whether or not they're going to, like, full greed it. Yeah, they are sacrificing the Fog. That's fine. I suppose fetching still, like, is something that matters for them. I think I am going to cycle the Hollow One, rather than play out the Blazing Rootwalla. I'm not sure if that's actually correct, but, like, at the end of the day, I have to remember I am a broken deck, and I think playing towards the broken lines is pretty important. All right. So my, my opponent gets to, to draw some cards and gain some life. A lot of things, a lot of things can go wrong here, uh, including my opponent just making some blockers with Destiny Spinner. Hmm. Yeah, I might lose this one. It, it is going to be close one way or another. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 enchantments. Alright, Paladin class has leveled up. Paladin class has leveled up. Oh, 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 fuck. The creature's getting plus 1, plus 1 coupled with double strike kills me, doesn't it? Uh, it is double strike, right? Yeah. Good god. Wow. GG's. Um, we're gonna have to screenshot that one for the sake of our opponent. Uh, okay. This is round three. Opening hand does literal nothing. Let's mulligan. Good luck, you two. This hand is probably fine. I don't love some of the specifics about it. Um... But I don't think this one is worth mulliganing. I'll throw back one careful study, even though I'm not super enthused about this mountain. Alright, let's once upon a time and try to turn this hand into something. Vengevine what we're turning it into? 
Yeah, Avenge Mine is probably what we're turning it into. Um, I don't want to get Wastelanded here. So let's play Mountain and Faithless Looting. All right. Discard the Vengevine and the Ox. And we'll try to work on a big turn two or turn three. Uh, this mountain was super awkward. I was like, I would love to careful study followed by breakthrough. That would get us there almost 100% of the time. Um, I don't think I want to go all in this turn. I think I just want to careful study off a trop. I think it's a trop, but it's awkward because, like, I want red red. But I also want to be able to pump this. Maybe red red is more important than pumping this. Um, but let's let's assume that's the case. And careful study. Oh, we're getting a brainstorm in response. An indicator that opponent is playing a deck with counter spells in all likelihood. Okay, we are getting a force pitching a shark typhoon. All right, buckle up. It's going to be a long match if my opponent starts pulling ahead. All right, another island. Stand still. Okay. Well, I am not going to take my time. Do I want to keep a card? Or do I just want to discard it all? I'll probably keep a card. An LED is pretty good. All right, take your cards. <laughs> Sorry, I was having a moment. I will I will discard this. The count of the lizard is three. Three is the count of the lizard. Not two, but three. Then we get to hollow one as well. And everyone is hasty, getting in there, doing some damage. Not a bad turn. Honestly, that was kind of fucked up. All right, opponent is brainstorming. Uh, there is still the theoretical out of brainstorm into brainstorm and terminus and white land. It's asking a lot, but uh, opponent does have 10 cards in hand currently, so shit can happen. Right, there's a Prismatic Vista, and there's the Concession. Okay, great. Dece to Dece plus hand. Um, how do I want to board versus this deck? I can Chain of Vapor to play around some of the bullshit at the top of the curve, um, such as like a moat. Like there's some random things like that that can really hose me. Um, but I think I just want to play two Lotus Petals and just try to go fast and kill my opponent. Um, maybe board out a bizarre trade mage and one once upon a time question mark. I think that's reasonable. Oh, a baby. So this one doesn't explode, but having the possibility of putting multiple venge mines into the graveyard on turn one and then getting them back on turn two is sick. I also get a lot of looks with this hand. Um, unfortunately, this is a hand that a rest in peace would be good against. And not very many hands are actually all that uh, susceptible to rest in peace. Uh, that's a shuffle. Oh, this is this is so much fun, fine. I also don't think I'm going to play around a back to basics. I think my colors just matter too much here. LED and Lotus Petal, huh? Okay. I will discard two venge mines. I will play a Lotus Petal. Uh, no, I guess I Faithless Looting. It uh, gets value. Uh, there is a certain degree of YOLO that is possible this turn. I feel like I don't want to do that degree of YOLO. I don't know, man. Top four cards, two sets of things for Faithless Looting to return 12 power immediately. Oh, it's so tempting. I can do like basically the same thing next turn. I'm gonna discard Vengevine in one LED. I'm gonna pass the turn and I'm gonna be pissed if my opponent has a rest in peace. Alright. Fuck. Yeah. What's the exact text? Okay, it's a Tormod script now. Well, that's real good. But I just don't know. Oh. I mean, okay. I think I break through for X equals one here and then floop a hollow one into play. Oh, those are those are not good cards. 
I'll junk all those and cast the hollow one. I'm unfavored here. Um, notably, looking at the cards that were uh, sort of like on the top there, if I would have gone for the double faceless looting line next turn, I would not have gotten there and actually returned the Vengevine's Brainstone. So that means opponent has uh, Urza Saga in their deck. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm one short of Ox currently. Okay. Am I okay with losing losing a Vengevine in order to just cast an Ox now, or do I want to wait a turn? I have three Vengevines in exile already. So, like, losing this last one is kind of a big deal. I think I'm willing to wait the turn. There's just so many... There's so much potential upside by waiting a turn. All right, so let's just go for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. All right, there's my cards. Will this work? And then I'll have three mana. I can cast pretty much any um, creature and then bring back Vengevine. That'll do, pig. That'll do. I'll just cast the Blazing Root Walla now. Yes, I'll use this ability. And I think currently I go to combat and attack with Vengevine and then post combat to the Anji's Ravager. Get him. Get him, plant man. You're not even a plant, right? Aren't you technically just an elemental? Yeah, not even an elemental plant, despite being a vine. All right, crack LED. And please don't Terminus me. Terminus is just quite savage here. All right, here is the Brainstone Legacy Staple. I said don't Terminus me, and they Terminus me. What am I supposed to do? Like, maybe I'm supposed to wait a turn and, like, not do stuff? But, like, save the Anji's Ravager for if, like, board falls apart? Okay. Um, I don't think I play this. I think I try to have another big turn. I'll, I'll take my time. All right. Yeah. I believe this game is lost. All right. Um, but if I'm going to get time to refuel, I'm going to take it. Anger. Anger is interesting. This is LED, Lotus Petal, Crack LED, Discarding Anger, Casting two cards, Attack with Anji's Ravager, Draw, draw three. It's just, I still think I'm just going to wait, though. Like, opponent is so likely to have either a source of Plowshares or a Counterspell or something that just makes this bad that I would rather wait a little while and try to do something a little more impressive than just like that. Yeah. Okay. Land go. And I didn't even take a turn. All I did was draw a card. Okay. Something bad's about to happen. All right, how bad is it? Oh, it's bad. The, uh, a 5-5 five five is pretty respectable. Oh, and the Nerza Saga? Yeah, that's, uh, that's no good for me. I, I still just don't think this hand is super impressive, but like this might just be the point where I have to just go. Yeah, I guess maybe I can cycle some hollow ones first and try to make something a little better of this. Like, I, I want to start with some looting effect, because, like, that makes me be able to cast the Hollow Ones as well. Um, plus three. I don't know. Maybe maybe this is just the, the point where if I don't go now, I'm just not going to do something impressive enough that's going to be worth it. Here we go. You've got ten cards. I've maybe got an LED. I really need this to resolve. Good. They're still holding up all that mana. They didn't want to hard cast it. I have five mana, which is awkward. And Anji's Ravager or Hollow One, not both. Um, let's try to make this turn better. I can still Anji's Ravager after this. Eh. Eh. I needed that LED. This is also just like not going to be good enough to beat their board, if it even makes it around. I will, I will just concede to the Source of Plowshares. It's fine. Nope, okay. Uh, the Snapcaster, sure. Target Swords, yep. All right, that's that's fine. We, we will try to do the explosive thing again. This one has just, like, tipped enough in favor of my opponent that uh, 
these small creatures are not going to get there, especially with the Revenge Vines in Exile. On the play, I want the other Once Upon a Time to help smooth out the openers. I think I'll go down one breakthrough versus my opponent's amount of counter magic. I don't know, maybe I should keep the Bizarre Trade Mage, but like that's not going fast. I just kind of had the unfortunate situation of like having a hand that was like very graveyard centric when normally that is not the case. All right, LED, LED. Maybe one LED careful study. LED, LED careful study. Uh, keep. Keep is, is what I'm getting at, basically. Land, LED. Opponent does not have counter magic, or they should have countered that. Um, do I play second LED? Second LED matters if I draw second Ravager. So I believe the answer is yes. Careful study. Oh shit, that's double Ravager. Nice, so it doesn't really matter which order I do this, because I'm going to double crack LED anyway. Is that true? Yeah, it doesn't really matter in which order I do this. Fast with Madness. Crack for red. Crack for red. Cast. Returns Vengevine. Yes. Cast. No big deal. I'm just going to double Ancestral next turn and then maybe Ox as well. We have 13 power on board. Uh, that's pretty good. Uh, yeah, let's just uh, let's just attack. See what happens. And them. The first Ravager trigger gets me a Ruwala. Cast. Second Ravager trigger also gets me a Ruwala. Don't have the mana for this one. Cast. And I believe I just go ahead and pump here and take the damage. I will not be playing another creature this turn. My opponent to three. Like, they, they are on Terminus or Bust. Uh, so I'm not going to, like, play out the Hollow One and expose that to removal. Like, I'd rather awkwardly cycle that later. Uh, this, this needs to be Tundra and Brainstorm. I don't know how many, how many Terminuses they're playing, but they need one here or they are dead. Oh no, opponent went to their turn. Oh, they don't have it. I can't think of any outs for my opponent now. They would need double Brainstorm. Or like maybe a Portent. And Brain... Uh, no? I have, I have no idea what they're playing towards. Yep. GG's. Okay, this is round four now. So... I'm gonna keep this hand. I'll fetch a Volcanic Island. I won't have access to green, but I shouldn't need it if things work out in my favor. So this is turn one, Faithless Looting off Valk, discard Vengevine and some other non root wallet card, and then try to assemble another Madness card to bring back Vengevine on turn two. Here we go. Fetch. Valk. Faithless Looting. Oh, Anger is a good discard. Anger is a very good discard. Anger and Vengevine. So when I hit three mana, I have guaranteed bringing back Vengevine. All right, we are playing against Death on Taxes. Nice. So my shit just resolves. I will start with a careful study. Ooh, that's a double root walla. That will bring back my Vengevine this turn. I'm good with that. Madness. And madness again. Yes. Okay, so now I have to think for a second. I can have 6 damage this turn, or I can have 9 damage this turn. If I cast Careful Study, I can discard the Ox. I'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 cards in Graveyard, uh, which turns on Cephalid Coliseum next turn. I kind of just want to pump, though. Get my damage in with the Root Wallows before threats like Thalia come in. <clears throat> All right. Opponent says they would love to play a mirror sometime. Opponent says, "I think this game is going to be a win for you." I agree, opponent. Uh, I got I got out ahead pretty quickly. Now things can happen. Like if like if they clog the board with Athalia and only take four, and then yeah, like th this is the start of something that can uh, can get through what I have. Okay. I, I think this is just an Anchi's Ravager turn rather than a careful study turn. 
Yeah, I think this is just an Anji's Ravager turn. I want to keep pressing the board advantage that I have. And then Vengevine. Put my opponent to 8. I was really hoping to, like, do Careful Study plus activate Cephalid Coliseum in the same turn cycle, but uh, you don't always get what you want. Let's, let's see if I can go wide of my opponent. Things can get pretty wild next turn. Oh, fuck, that Anji's Ravager had haste. Uh, forgot about the anger. That was a small punt on my end. Oh, okay, no, that's at least a medium-sized punt. Batter Skull, sure. The Flicker Wisp, okay. Just take another piece of equipment. That's reasonable. Forge comes back. Oh yeah, missing that three points of damage last turn was so bad. And get the Jete. Sure. Uh, I think I want to uh, just attack with this. <coughs> Excuse me. And I think this is a send all, and I don't care that I lose some root wall of value. Get him. Discarding these first three doesn't do a ton. Just like puts the ox in the graveyard and turns on threshold. Uh, discarding. Yeah. Nope. Second set gives me. Okay, this is good. Oh, now I can't. Uh, Thalia is a thing that exists. Oh man, I hope my opponent jumped blocks with a Thalia. I haven't done the math for what exactly they have to do to survive. Like a flicker was probably goes here. A Thalia goes here. They can stay alive. <clears throat> oh, sorry. I just had a bunch of ice cream in between rounds, and now my throat is very cold. Oh, this works out so well for me. All right, so goodbye to two of your creatures. Okay. And my opponent goes to three. Now that Thalia is gone, I can go... And I guess I could have done this anyway with Thalia around. I can do LED and get an ox back from the graveyard. Um, I guess the Faithless Looting is basically free first. Um, unless I want access to green mana. Oh no, I think I have a Taiga. Yeah, I do have a Taiga. So let's Faithless Looting. Yeah, got a bonus root wall out of it. This will return the Venge Vine, I believe. No? Alright. Okay, my opponent has seen the writing on the wall. What do I want versus Death and Taxes? These I would like removal spells. Um, I'm gonna just kind of like put the cards that I'm thinking about trimming over here. I'm not gonna trim any of the inexpensive stuff. I think I think it's these nine cards that are potentially coming out. I don't know that I need the haste, honestly. I think I think a lot of times without the haste is just fine because I'm just gonna make bigger bodies than what they can do in the early game. I don't think I want that. I don't think I want the breakthroughs. And then it's the question of, like, do I want all four Once Upon a Times, or do I want two Angers, two Once Upon a Times? I am not sure. I could also, like, trim one Ox, anticipating Rest in Peace. Something like that. Give myself access to an Anger. I don't know. An Anger is weird. Keep the Ox. Ox is just so good with LED. I'm still learning this, like, Madvine deck in terms of its sideboarding. I am I am not confident that I am sideboarding, quote-unquote, correctly. I think I am sideboarding fine, but I don't know that I am sideboarding correctly. This hand is okay. It's not better than okay, but it has an LED, and a lot of things can make this hand broken. I get a once upon a time to find something good to discard to a Firestorm or a Lightning Axe. I think this is going to be fine. Planes. Um, yep. That's fine. So, I'll have some decisions to make this turn. But we always start here. Asking Rootwall a hollow one. How batshit insane can my turn one be? If I take hollow one. I can cast a Firestorm for x equals three. Target. Land Firestorm. Discard, like, one, two, three, a hollow one, and Anji's Ravager. Yeah, I'm good with that. I'll fetch... I think I want a Volcanic Island, despite the fact that um, Wasteland exists. Alright. One, two, 
three. Oh, actually, I can I can do this better. Well, I guess I'm always doing this. No, I can't crack the LED until I cast the hollow one. The hollow one needs to remain in my hand. All right, one, two, three, red, one, two, three, done. Everyone, everyone hurts. Cast the hollow one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ox requires eight, right? Yeah, okay, so I do just want to Andre's Ravager. Add a second of doubt where I had to actually think about what I wanted to do. All right, um, good turn one. Let's see if my opponent has a removal spell for my Andre's Ravager. Because if they don't, I expect I put a W on the board. All right. <clears throat> Cards I care about for my opponent. Source of Plowshares, Path to Exile, to a much, much lesser extent, Rest in Peace. Um, Stoneforge Mystic is okay. I might kill my opponent before it becomes relevant. Okay, Source of Plowshares is very good. Battle. If my opponent has a follow-up, Wasteland or Stoneforge, they are probably ahead. They do. That's no bueno. We'll see what my opponent gets. Probably Cauldra? Yeah, Cauldra's so good. Alright. We'll see if my opponent just, like, caches in Mother Runes for 4 life. I think that's also possible here. I don't know if it's correct, but I think it's possible. Nope. So now I don't have easy attacks in. Oh, is my opponent just gonna attack with Cauldra? That is ambitious. Oh wow, yeah, it's happening. Does that mean like their last card is like a Swords of Plowshares or Path to Exile? Like this attack makes sense. Seven cards in Graveyard, huh? Seven cards in Graveyard. I think I am supposed to do this pre-combat. Who's me? Oh yeah. Discard Vengevine and Blazing Rootwalla. Oh, I need to discard one more. Uh, and Wooded Foothills then. I will cast this with Madness. We'll then play LED. And I think Anji's Ravager. Rather than Ox, it's real close though. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I can do so. Uh, but I think I just want to use the Anji's Ravager. <clears throat> I think I just want to use the Anji's Ravager. Oh, maybe I don't. Ox is so good. And I haven't made my land drop yet. Let's let's do the ox. All right, one, two, three, four, four, five, six, seven, eight. Can't count. Still can't count. Done. There's just some lines where I get an anger into play this turn and just kill my opponent if I use the ox. Take my ancestral. A faithless looting. Um. I think I will cast that. Oh, these cards aren't great. I'm pretty far away from Cephalid Coliseum doing its stuff. Uh, that said, I think I still keep it. I think I do something that looks like that. Oh, wait, I haven't made a land drop yet. End them. Oh, it is a Solitude. <clears throat> solitude on Hollow One is quite good. Yep, as expected. Now my opponent takes no damage this turn. Um, but I don't know that they respected the, the explosiveness of my deck by making that Cauldra attack. Yep, yep, yep. Need one card to go to my graveyard. So I can activate... Wait, I did make a land drop? Oh, did I activate a Cephalid Coliseum already or something? That's very possible. Yeah, things are pretty close right now. I think my opponent is ever so slightly favored. <clears throat> don't mind that um unfortunately just have to pass the turn here and i think the second piece of equipment that my opponent got was jitte so that's what my opponent there was a second piece of equipment right oh is that the pre that was the previous game sorry they're getting a little uh blurred together i have played a lot of magic in the last 48 hours in an attempt to build up the queue um so that when i go out of town uh there's still video content. 
Five cards in graveyard, six cards in graveyard. Still not quite there. I can cycle a hollow one. I would much rather just play that, though, when I get around to uh, doing Cephalid Coliseum things. So I think I'm just going to slow my roll. I might change my mind. I, res or I reserve the right to change my mind. Alright, Vile is quite good for my opponent. Like, not immediately, but long term. That's very good to have. My Cephalid Coliseum gets tapped down here. Oh, interesting. I'll allow it. And cycle Faithless Looting, but then Hollow One costs one. I might still just cycle Faithless Looting to put my Vengevine in the graveyard, though. I do have two of them. Here we go. Oh, oh. two Vengevines to yard. And the ability to crack the Cephalid Coliseum next turn, and then Hollow One is guaranteed. So my opponent will, well, should probably tap down. Oh, wait. We can make that work. Because I have Hollow One specifically. So I can Hollow One plus Madness one other thing and return double Vengevine. Okay, yeah, I don't like that play. That allows me to use the mana for Cephalid Coliseum. I think you're supposed to get the mountain because, like, that denies mana 100% of the time. Alright. Target me. And do the thing. Yeah, so I can discard, like, one, two, three. This is my first spell. I can still cast an artifact spell, though. So I will cast a hollow one. Which returns a double Vengevine. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Opponent said, you really live up to your name. GG's. Yeah. What, what an out of, like, being able to bring back the Vengevines because I have Hollow One specifically. Send them. Opponent might be able to survive a turn, by the way. I haven't uh, done the math. This is four damage this turn. Plus my opponent loses two creatures. Um, the lightning axe situation is awkward. I think I can just leave that for next turn and be totally fine with pumping this turn. But I could use it to get rid of Mother of Runes this turn. Alright. Opponent goes to five and uh, did not protect with Mother of Runes. Uh, which, uh, which matters. I, I think my opponent's dead either way, but, you know, little things. GG's. What was the record up to now? Is that 2 and 2? No, it's 3 and 1. Great. Is this a keep? Nods. This is a keep. Um, this produces at least a Vengevine worth of value on turn 1. I just really want our opponent to not be on a blue deck so that all my shit resolves 100% of the time. All right. Wish denied. Um, I do have double LED, though. So it's actually pretty unlikely that my opponent can stop what I'm doing anyway. Okay, Bizarre Trade Mage is not what I'm looking for here. Start by seeing if these resolve. I'm going to want both of them 100% of the time. Fetch a Volcanic, I believe. I'll cast the Careful Study. We'll see how dumb I can make this hand. People, you gotta, you gotta start forcing the LEDs. Like, I know I had two this hand, but you have to force the LEDs. It's so important. Alright. Um, so I will crack one of these for... It doesn't matter. Because, like, once the LED goes, stuff like this just gets to happen. Cast. Cast. Yes. And I'll get in there with a the Vengevine. I didn't have anything broken to do with the Lion Die Diamond mana, um, but I'll still just have another discard outlet in the future, uh, which is legit. I can also just convert it into some damage. Ooh. I don't know if I want to cast that, actually. Like, pumping. Pumping might just be better in this turn cycle. I, like, I don't know what I'm playing against yet. What did this pitch? Uh, yeah, just... Super ambiguous opener still. But if I'm on something, uh, if my opponent is on something like a show and tell list, I just want to kill my opponent as quickly as possible. 
this brainstorm timing indicates to me that it's probably a fair blue deck and they're looking for a removal spell but i don't know for sure okay fetch do your thing underground see fatal push oh that's not what you want fatal push i mean it like saves the most damage right now but i don't think that's good I think I'm just going to Lizard Pump this turn, and then try to double Faithless Looting next turn and bring it back. Rather than, like, try to bring it back this turn cycle when things are a little more volatile. Alright, Delta. No big deal. I'm going to turn off Auto Yields in case my opponent casts a Toxic Deluge and I decide I want to save a Rootwalla. Alright, so some sort of Grixis Control list. Oh, Plague Engineer. Alright, well, I don't get to save the Lizards from that. That's pretty good. It's fine. I don't know that I'll get lucky enough to like double madness this turn and make this work. But I'll try. Oh, anger is quite good. Start anger and vengevine. Ooh. All right. Am I playing this land? I think I'll play the land. I don't think I'm just gonna um, faithless looting for like no real value here. I think I'm gonna just assume that on the turn where I cast two spells, two creatures, my opponent dies. A double Vengevine coming back it is probably lights out in game one. My opponent can play Cling to Dust and deal with some of this, uh, which would be annoying. Oh, well. This is so inconvenient. This is so incredibly inconvenient, because I was about to win the game. Yeah, there's nothing to be done about that. It's okay. Like, I will I will find a red source. And then, like, that comes back and should pretty much be lights out for my opponent. My opponent's also really low on resources. I also don't know if my opponent should be attacking with Plague Engineer, if I'm being honest. Like, I have anger. Ooh. Narset is annoying. My opponent has hit that point where they're thinking about whether or not they're attacking. Oh, they are. Sure. All right. Do I play the ox now? I can play the ox now. It's just a 5 3. It'll trade with Plague Engineer. It doesn't draw me cards. I think I wait. I think I wait until I can double spell. That may be giving my opponent too much time, but it, it seems like Vengevine coming back. Vengevine's coming back is pretty damning. My opponent apparently has a very hard choice here. All right, they have picked up a Jace the Mind Sculptor. All right, are you going to play it immediately? They will. Oh. So we're brainstorming. That's all fine. Still attacking, huh? Like, double Vengevine attack is lethal. I'm just going to continue to play towards Ox, plus, like, a Root Walla, bringing back the Vengevines and killing my opponent. It becomes a little harder as my opponent gets to brainstorm with Chase more times. Yeah. Okay. This is the sort of stuff that starts to worry me. I also, like, can't really crack this fetch land. I need to keep this in play in case uh, Chase starts fate sailing me. I'll cast this now, question mark? Possible I'm supposed to cast it on my opponent's end step instead. Oh, these are weird. <clears throat> I guess I just take the Vengevine as something I will intend on hard casting next turn. This nurse that this in play is really fucking with me. Like, if not for that, I would have already oxed many turns ago and like Faithless Looting and yada 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 yada. Alright, Jace continues to brainstorm. I don't want more copies of that card in play. Bad enough. Now it's starting to get to the point where I might not have lethal after quote-unquote, doing the thing and bringing back a couple of Vengevines. One is being so aggressive with these attacks. I don't know what their hand looks like. Like, they've had a, a couple of turns to brainstorm. Like, their hand could be just stacked. Uh, Narset, blah. Let's attempt a Vengevine. I'm going to point this at the Jace, I think. Oh, maybe, maybe I just point at their face. I, I think it dies regardless of where I point it. Uh, but given the clock that I'm on, I'm just going to point it at their face. 
Um, note, I can just die to four power attacking me plus a lightning bolt. Okay, they are blocking. That's fine. So I am I am still just playing towards drawing any uh any root walla type creature. Just cast that plus ox. Uh, two, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so I'm dead as long as my opponent chooses to shock me. Okay, they did choose to shock me. I'm gonna I'm gonna take the couple extra seconds off the clock here if I'm being real though. Um, Brix's control is not known for closing games quickly. Like most of your threats are anemic beaters like Baleful Strix and Snapcaster Mage. So if things end up going very long, uh, which they're somewhat likely to do. I want to have that sort of stuff. All right. Um, I don't know that I really need to sideboard much. I'm going to board out that. Like an Ancient Grudge for Baleful Strix and Firestorm or Lightning Axe for Baleful Strix and Plague Engineer. I can just try to go fast with Lotus Petal. Is this five to any target? How does this read? Target creature. A lot of those things got eroded in weird ways. Some of them do Planeswalkers, some of them don't. I, think I like having access to a couple of Firestorms. Firestorm is each target's, or any target's rather. So, I like, that can hit Planeswalkers. It can clean up Strix and uh, a lot of Plague Engineers and Snapcasters and stuff. I am good with that. All right, um... This opening hand doesn't exactly do anything. I'm going to try to find something that's ob objectively more powerful. Like the careful student... Not that words. Nope. Mulligan. How good is this? I can Firestorm for X equals 2. Firestorm for X equals 2. Discard like Vengevine Anger. And I can attack with a hasty hollow one on turn 1. With a Vengevine in Graveyard. I, I, eh? Like... My opponent's deck is just full of removal of various kinds. I don't know that that wins. It's it's not bad. I, I just don't know that it actually wins. I'm gonna I'm gonna try going one deeper. I am unhappy with this hand, but at this point I probably have to keep. I'm gonna junk these two cards. I'm not uh, super happy with this. It can become good depending on what the careful study looks like, but I expect to lose this game. This is worse than the Hasty Hollow one hand. Like, I have double creature on turn one if I want it, but then I don't have Hollow one easily. I don't have red to pump those and turn them into real threats. Yeah, I'm just I'm just not happy with this. If I had another land, I wouldn't even cast this careful study this turn. Yikes. This is bad. This is bad news, Bears. Alright. Well. Let's hope to just draw straight fire off the top for the rest of the game. Um, but even if I count the fire breathing, I only have four damage. I don't know. Maybe if I can get to seven cards in graveyard, I can make this all work out. Balk, send them. Go, lizard friends, go. And I'm going to hold this LED in hand for a while. Until I'm very sure I know what I want to do with it. I don't want to play it out and just get it like... Uh, call against command or something. All right. A Hydroblast targeting the Rootwalla. I think you're supposed to do that in combat and save the damage. Because most of the time, like with the play patterns of this deck, you do most of what you can pre-combat because of the possibilities of like various combo potentials resulting in you doing just disgustingly broken things quickly. I'm going to pump, and I'm not going to cycle a hollow one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take my damage. It's possible I need to cycle one hollow one and work towards my graveyard count increasing. Like counting my fetch land, I only have three in there right now. Four once the root wall dies. It's possible that working towards one hollow one like in play is more important than trying to live the dream of doing double. And before I get got by a whole breacher, though. A mountain. Boo. These LEDs are not good here. The little lizard that could. Fatal push. Fatal push. Yep. Alright. I'm running on fumes. 
I think I have to keep the hollow one. Because, like, I can hard cast it if I draw another body. Otherwise, I'm at five cards in Graveyard. I can start working towards Sepulid Coliseum stuff. Uh, but my situation is quite bad. Narset, Hull Breacher, Jace. They're all rough. All right, how bad is it? It's Jace bad. Hollow One is bad against Jace. Maybe I have to cycle Hollow One here and try to do something broken now. Yup. Brainstorm away. I am going to go ahead and cycle this now. I am not happy about it. Um, but the the plan is not coming together. Classic. Six cards in Graveyard. Oh my god. <laughs> I love Lion's Eye Diamond, but not like this. Possibly I was supposed to play out one LED before doing this on the off chance that I were to draw double Anji's Ravager. Oh, we're getting surgical I don't know that that surgical makes sense. Like, there's two hollow ones in Graveyard. If I play one hollow, word, hollow one afterwards, it's not particularly good against Jace. I'd have to have double hollow one afterwards for that to be good. I think Vengevine is, like, the card that you theoretically want to surgical. Um, but I guess they could be keeping me off of Zeppelin Coliseum activation. No, because I'll still have seven. Careful study plus the two cards that I discard. That is a force of will pitching a spell pierce. I did not want to proceed to that phase, but okay. Um, yeah, that's a really annoying lag flick thing. So the reason I did not want to proceed phases there was that I wanted to play out all three LEDs, crack crack two of the three to get to Threshold through Cephalid Coliseum, and then try to get a Vengevine into play off the Cephalid Coliseum activation. It's definitely a Hail Mary play, but I think I would have been going for it. Um, but say Levy. Okay. Trying to get some Moto lag. Um, there was a Prismatic Vista in there. And I can see Douthy Voidwalker in chat. Oh, and Plague Engineer. All right, well... Fuck. That's bad. I think this is the point where I can uh, go ahead and concede with both of those cards on the, on the board. GG's. I gotta play it out, but I think my opponent is uh, pretty well in control of the situation here. Alright, uh, so we end up with a 3-2 in this league. Um, the Madness deck as a whole just feels really good. I'm very happy with it. Um, overall thoughts on the deck list? Bizarre Trade Mage kind of felt like whatever. I sideboarded out a handful of times, and like by the time you get to three mana, like a lot of times you've already done your broken thing, whatever it is. So I would probably replace the Bizarre Trade Mage with, oh, I don't know, one of the like draw four, discard four at randoms. I think that's totally reasonable as a way to make the hollow ones better. Um, as far as the sideboard goes, I don't know that I'd make any changes. The sideboard felt fine. I brought the Lotus Petals in a couple times. I brought the Chains in a couple times. Um, I mean, the biggest question, if you are one of the people working on the Madness decks, is like, is 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 Rug better than Green Red? Is better than Jund? How does that all play out? I think I like the Jund version the best, but it's hard to tell. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please click the like button. It's one of the easiest ways to support me. If you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing for Legacy Modern and Vintage content seven days a week. If you want to play this, check out the link to the deck list via Top Deck in the video description. And if you want to get your own thing on stream, that info is there as well. Have a great rest of the day.